So, hello everyone, um, and a very warm welcome uh, to today's webinar uh, hosted by PV Tech in association with the module manufacturer Astrology. My name is Ben Willis, and I'm consultant editor at PV Tech. Today, we'll hear about the technological advances offered by Astrology's newest products, the Astro N7 and Astro N7S Topcon modules. Among their many features, these modules are notable for using rectangular rather than square wafers. The first rectangular wafers appeared on the market a couple of years ago, marking an important new technological departure for the industry. The shift from square to rectangular wafers offers various benefits, including increased module power, optimized container utilization, and thus lower shipping costs and reduced system costs. Initially, the emergence of an, of an entirely new wafer format caused some confusion and disruption in the industry supply chain, as the variety of different sizes appearing on the market led to challenges with costs, logistics, transportation, and the design and installation of solar, solar power plants. But last year, some of the industry's leading PV producers, including Astronogy, joined forces on an initiative to agree a set of standardized dimensions for modules using rectangular wafers. This brought greater clarity and predictability for the industry on the future development of the rectangular format. And the expectation is that the market share enjoyed by rectangular wafers and modules will increase steadily. Today, Astrology product manager Sibin Yang will walk us through some of the intricacies of the Astro N7 and N7S modules. We'll hear how the Astro N7's design makes it perfectly suited to utility scale applications by reducing tracker and cabling costs. And we'll learn more about how the N7S maximizes power output relative to its area, making it an ideal choice for rooftop applications where space is a constraint. After Sibin has given his presentation, we'll be opening the floor to questions from you, our audience. As always, this interaction is really important to us, so please put your questions for today's speaker in the questions tab on the right-hand side of your screen and we'll do our best to answer them in the Q&A session after the presentations. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Sibin. Thank you very much. Um, hello everyone, I'm Sibin Yang from Astrology. It is an honor to represent our company and bring our latest product. I will introduce our technology and hopefully give you an idea about our innovation of rectangular wafer modules. Uh, first thing first, why rectangular wafer modules? Nowadays, as PV industry is going mature, uh, manufacturers are keen to make solar modules more economic. This leads us to a point where we try to increase the power and reduce the system cost to meet the requirement of growing renewable energy. Um, larger power modules correspondingly consist of larger solar wafers. Common top cone wafers are in size of 180 square and known as M10, but rectangular wafers differ in various dimensions. However, this does not necessarily change the module size. The module size is unified as 2382 times 1134 in order to keep it consistent and make a standard in the industry. The dimension of modules will consequently optimize the cost in freight and system design, which will be explained in the next chapter. Here is our current M5 series uh, using M10 wafers and the advancing N7S and N7 modules use larger rectangular wafers the wafer area is increased by 5.7% and 15.6% respectively. 
Now, uh, when it comes to the comparison of uh, 210 meter square modules, known as G12 and M10 modules, rectangular wafer modules are in good balance in between the two. To make higher power modules, uh, we either increase the power or increase the current. For G12, um, 66 cell modules, there are fewer cells, but wafers are larger. This may cause some risks in uh, mechanical performance, um, transportation, and installation, as well as electrical problems of high current. For M10 modules, that is 182 uh, millimeter square wafer modules, uh, there are more cells, but wafers are smaller. This results in larger voltage and hence smaller string size. There may also be a higher potential of hotspot risk. Therefore, N7 series are to observe uh, the good things about the two. It has higher power, a median module dimension, um, moderate current and low voltage. High module power solution with a balanced current and voltage to maximize overall advantages. Um, speaking of N7 series, now we are looking into the details. Um, N7 series, including N7 and N7S, our long-term positioning is to make them one of the main and the flagship products of Topcon. Um, for N7, it is uh, applicable in utility scale. But instead, N7S, as a smaller module is more suitable for residential use. In some countries, such as German, um, policy states that the area of module must be less than two meters square, and N7S is just underneath two meters square. With that being said, um, we compare several schemes and find out that N7S modules will have the highest module efficiency uh, based on the same cell efficiency. You may realize that there's a negative gap, but this is the core technique in N7S. Um, in the design of N7S, we eliminate uh, traditional metallization design with multi bus bars and turn into zero bus bar. As the cells overlap, the gap becomes negative and the, the film Fills in between cells plays a role of buffer, which reduces the risk of micro cracks. This is the tiling structure. Um, in the combination of zero bus bar and tiling film interaction, the soldering ribbon is prefixed with the encapsulation film and cells in one step process. And only contact is formed during lamination with process temperature less or equal to 150 degrees Celsius, uh, which lowers the thermal stress. Uh, move on to N7 modules. The core technology is super multi bus part. We increase the number of bus bars from 11 to 16, and such design shortens current transmission path, um, reduces series. Re uh, series resistance, cell power loss, and improve module efficiency. As for um, reliability, N7 has better tolerance for cell micro cracks and fractures of fingers. Uh, the stress distribution is more uniform as well. Um, ultimately, more in the thinner bus bars reduce the amount of overall uh, silver paste without compensating cell efficiency. Those were considered in cells design, but further, we also considered optimization in the rear side of the modules, uh, where we add light redirecting film in a gap between cells. Um, the light redirecting film consists of three layers. The outer reflective layer is made of um, high reflective alloy coating, which has good adhesion and weather resistance. The support layer uses PET and low shrinkage material to prevent water vapor. Um, the inner adhesive, the adhesive, adhesive layer uses EVA. Um, the wavy reflective layer helps to redirect the light uh, to the front side of modules. Because of the smaller shading area, the bifacial rate is improved too. And as a result, increasing the module power by two volts or more 
compared to 182 72 cell modules. The non-glazed glass that is used has good stress uniformity, which enhances the module strength, provides better mechanical load performance and better impact resistance. Um, having mentioned the above features, we are more interested in how they can benefit our customers. Um, during the freight cost, in, in the in freight cost, 182, uh, 72 cell modules do not fully take up the space um, in a regular HQ container. Uh, but a container conveying N7 modules will have about um, 18 kilowatts, uh, which is about 4.3% increase in power. Uh, around 0 0.04 cents per volt can be saved. Uh, in a system design, rectangular wafer modules have uh, higher power output, but the same module width compared to the traditional um, 182 square wafer modules, which effectively reduces the bus cost um, of cables in racking system. Astro NS has lower open circuit voltage compared to 181 rectangular uh, 72 cell modules and 182 72 um, cell modules, and it allows to connect additional two panels in a string for a 1,500 volt system. Um, to show that, there's a more straightforward comparison for different size of modules in tracker. Um, we can see there's a about 12.3% increase in the system power per checker uh, compared to con conditional uh, modules, reducing the cost of controlling and driving parts in trackers. Astro N7 is specifically tailored for utility scale systems. It features a 66 cell layout design that effectively lowers the open circuit voltage and increases string size. Um, additionally, with Dimensions of uh, 2382 times 1134 are uh, matching the width of PV modules based on the 182 uh, square, uh, millimeter square wafer. Uh, most PV trackers can accommodate an equal number of panel strings on each tracker. And the larger string size of the N7 also boosts uh, the total voltage per tracker, leading to a substantial uh, reduction in tracker costs compared to all other panel formats. Uh, for projects uh, utilizing PV trackers, N7 can achieve very good LCOE results. To demonstrate that, here are some case studies we do in different regions, um, including China, uh, UAE, and the UK. We look at fixed mounting and tracker installation, as well as the difference between uh, central centralized inverter and string inverters. Uh, on the graph, we can see apparent LCOE advantages of Astro N7 series because of the larger string size that reduces the tracker costs and the larger DCAC ratio also reduces the AC bus cost too. Um, last but not least, um, we try to mention about the company, some updates in astrology. Um, for the past few years, we've already doubled our shipments uh, from uh, 2020 until now, and we are expecting that to grow in the future too. Um, we try to spread our business all over the world. Um, we've, we've already built uh, many manufacturing bases. Some are still in construction, but some are already in operation. Um, our footprints, um, has set in America, Europe, Brazil, uh, Turkey, Thailand, and Saudi Arabia. And by 2025, we are expecting our um, capacity to reach uh, over 100 gigavolts. Um, as the carbon emission is a very popular topic, uh, we really care about how carbon is traced and uh, emitted. So uh, we look for certificates uh, from uh, the well-known institutions. Um, some certificates are still in, per, in pending process and some already finished. Um, we also build connection uh, with the authorities in PV industry, uh, including PV Magazine Tests, um, TOV Rhineland, uh, PVEL, um, IETC, 
and we show all the potential um, in yield performance, outdoor energy yield by facial uh, performance, and BIPV, uh, cell efficiency, uh, top performer, et cetera, um, to build our reputation. Um, I think that's the all for the presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much, Sivin, uh, for a very informative, uh, insightful presentation. Um, so we're now moving on to the Q and A uh, part of the the webinar. Um, so we've got a few few questions to get through here. Um, one is about the size of of wafers. Um, I mean, obviously the the move to to the rectangular format. Was a was a big departure for the industry, but I wonder if you could offer any insights on the question of whether wafers, rectangular wafers, are going to uh, carry on getting larger uh, in, into the future. Uh, well, that's that's possible um, because we have there's a tendency that we want to make uh, larger voltage uh, modules, but to change the wafer size that involves a, a larger scale in in uh, the, the whole pro product ecosystem, it may involve in changing inverters, um, the, the string size, the system voltage, uh, the, the trackers of, 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 and containers as well. So and that is not an easy, easy way for manage, manufacturers to, to do that. And um, if the industry wants to compromise the design and, and verify um, the, the wafer size and to finalize it and, and finally to make that a uh, mainstream uh, wafer size. So that's not an easy thing. Yeah, and then I mentioned in my um, introduction about the standardization project last year. I think there were two separate um, initiatives, um, <clears throat> both of which astrology were, were involved in. Um, I wonder if you could just talk a bit about that, um, you know, what, what the kind of the thinking was behind the need for standardization. And, um, you know, obviously, um, certain standards were, were ultimately agreed. Uh, and I wonder if you could give us some thoughts on how the, how the agreement of those standards have kind of helped the industry kind of get to grips with, um, you know, the presence of uh, an availability of rectangular wafers. Um, we've, we've um, there's a com uh, com competing uh, wafer size, and there's one, uh, a 210 uh, wafer that is squared. Uh, we've already uh, made our studies in that, and we compete uh, our LCLE analysis in uh, in the bus uh, because of the size uh, of the uh, uh, 210 wafers, and that is uh, actually wider. So when we make the comparison in the system design, um, especially in, in tracker system, because you, uh, given the the same tracker length, you can you may not be able to uh, connect as many uh, panels. Uh, as our N7 rectangular wave modules, and um, that may cause a uh, lower power per tracker. Um, so um, we, we we have already uh, made discussions about whether we will expand in that direction. Um, but currently, we think that uh, the standardized uh, wave size has already been a common sense in in, in the industry. And um, if there's any change in for particular projects that may stand out, that feature uh, we probably will. Um, be more interesting in that and look into detail. Okay, thank you. Um, and you, you talked a bit about um, the uh, sort of benefits of of, um, the, the, of modules using rectangular wafers in terms of uh, sort of system costs. Um, I wonder if you could just talk in a little bit more detail about that, because obviously that's, uh, you know, something that everyone is interested in, you know, ultimately, what impact these modules have on the bottom line of a of a project? What what are the some of sort of the sort of standout features uh, of the the N seven range in terms of reducing system cost? Okay, so uh, the basic logic that we just mentioned, we compare uh, the N seven S with uh, 66, uh, 66 cell modules. So that's in the scale of number of uh, the number of cells. So we all know that system voltage uh, is uh, 1500. So to reach that, 
uh, if you have a higher voltage, you probably will have you you cannot you cannot connect as many as possible. So uh, compared to traditional uh, 72 cell modules, uh, you probably will have um, higher. Uh, you, you probably have lower voltage. Uh, you have for lower current, but uh, you have 66 um, cells. Uh, your voltage will be less, so you can connect more. But we can make a larger power out of an one individual module. So that will make the especially tracker system will, have, will possess a higher power per tracker. So the that part of uh, cost in, in tracker will be compensated uh, by the adding of extra number of uh, modules uh, in, in the tracker length. Uh, ultimately, the, the, the cost will be uh, revealing uh, the advantage of rectangular wafer size. Um, and and that that is actually very closely related to how um, the manufacturer defines the way you connect the, uh, the, 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 the PV system. Because in the future, we probably will see a system with uh, 2000 volts and, and uh, the tracker manufacturers, they probably will tend to make longer trackers and these will all uh, make the uh, situation change as well. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question came in about um, performance uh, in very cold temperatures. Um, the example given was uh, in the Nordics. Um, I wonder if you could just talk a bit about the sort of durability, performance, reliability aspect of the um, N7 and N7S modules. Uh, some of the sort of testing that you've um, subjected the modules to and um, some of their sort of performance attributes in you know, extreme conditions such as the one mentioned by the questioner, uh, in this instance, very cold, but I guess, you know, similarly, heat, extreme heat is, a, is an issue, um, uh, corrosive environments, all of those kind of um, conditions that modules are subjected to these days. Uh, any insights you're able to offer on the sort of performance, durability, reliability question would be very interesting, I think. Um, so one thing I want to mention is the the effect of the uh, surrounding temperatures to uh, to the systems. So if we try to defer N7 and N7S, so uh, the basic logic is if the temperature is um, high, and that that will make the operating modules uh, the the voltage of operating modules um, reduces, and that allows you to uh, connect more modules. Uh, per stream. So like if the historical lowest temperature is like extremely low, like a minus 20. So if for uh, for larger PV plants, that may not allow you to uh, connect uh, like 28, but probably fewer 26 or, or 25 um, modules in, in one stream. So that's regarding the stream size. But we just mentioned about N7S. The feature of um, N7S is that we try to adapt to the policies in, in uh, work, work world. Uh, so like in German, we uh, will have to uh, follow the restriction that you have to be less than two meters squares. So um, the thing that we um, look closely in, in SMS is we will try to uh, make the power as, as large as we can. Um, as for the reliability tests um, if affected by the temperature, uh, we will have um, a particular auto test uh, for N7S uh, as the material that we use in, in, in N7S um, is very adaptable uh, for different type of roofs. And we also um, include um, different uh, appearance designs where we have all black, uh, all black appearance uh, for aesthetic uh, purposes. So that makes your uh, N7S modules more uh, beautiful look on your, on your roof. Um, I think that's it. Okay, thank you. A uh, couple of sort of detailed questions about the sort of construction of the modules. One here about whether the modules are glass uh, stroke back sheet. Um, I wonder if you could give us any further insights into into you know the the, the construction of the N seven and N seven S modules. Um. The, the very popular design for the current uh, modules, we, we tend to, uh, to make them like double glasses. So the front, front side and the back side, the rear side are also made of uh, glasses. That is to increase the reliability because for, uh, for back sheets, 
Uh, it is easily affected by vapor, um, by, temper, uh, by temperature. So when it has a, a deformation and the mechanical load performance will change as well. Um, and, and particularly for roof, for rooftop projects, uh, we care about uh, whether the front sides will be able to uh, endure uh, the effects of uh, hail and snow, icing, etc. So um, that's why the, the market is tend to uh, is tending to uh, advertising uh, how double glass uh, mo uh, modules can be um, reliable in, in, in various scenarios. Um, so. Uh, I think that's one thing that we have to uh, to speak out that why the double glass uh, modules are uh, utilized uh, very popularly uh, right now because people try to uh, save more money instead of uh, sometimes instead of you, you want to get the bifacial gain from the backside. So uh, that's more of a uh, that's more of consideration under you know economic factors. Okay, thank you. Um, just as a, a follow-up question to that, I guess, um, I think there's been um, some discussion uh, recently in the industry about double glass modules and their reliability in terms of mechanical stresses. I know we've actually just uh, got an article coming out this month in our journal PV Tech Power on this, this very question, particularly in the context of um, you know modules becoming larger. Uh, one of the kind of flip sides to that is, um, you know, uh, less mechanical strength. I wonder if you could talk about the the sort of me mechanical strength aspect of um, of these modules. Okay, um, so I, I I did see the uh, question coming up. Um, the difference between the double glass modules and single glass module is that the thickness of the glass is different. If you you've just made uh, the module. Uh, with one side made of glass, and you can make that thicker. Well, that happens, um, particularly in the scenarios that uh, I just mentioned, you will have to uh, encounter uh, situations where you will have a strong impact on the front sides. And in that cases, um, uh, what single glass modules will be preferred. But the more commonly scenarios that we've seen is the, uh, especially for root, rooftop, or some other cases where you have a uh, heavy rainfall, and th those water vapor will be uh, will be stored at the backside of your uh, modules. So the vapor part, uh, the water vapor, uh, may be um, uh, penetrating the back sheet. That's not uh, durable enough, and that damages your modules. So you will not, um, you definitely will not try to uh, sac sacrifice uh, the. Uh, that kind of uh, cost to compensate the energy that it may provide. So um, that's why some sometimes uh, double glass uh, modules may be um, preference. Okay, I think we've probably got time for one last question. Um, in terms of the residential module, I think you, you talked in your presentation about um, the, the restrictions on the, the um, the, the, the area, the size that these these could uh, go to, particularly, I think you mentioned Germany. Um, the question was asking whether you were likely to be bringing out a larger residential module than the N7S um, in light of perhaps uh, some of these rules easing, if that is indeed the plan. Um, besides, uh Besides uh, uh, 54 cells uh, in, in 7S, we also have uh, the products that is made of uh, 60 cells uh, modules. That is actually larger. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, the uh, 50, 54 cell modules is particularly for the policy that has restriction for module size. But in outside of that, you can uh, definitely use uh, larger modules to increase the power so you have more uh, power gain. Um, that is uh, depending on uh, whether your project is re restricted. Uh, the thing that we uh, just try to share is the, the technology that we use to maximize the, uh, the power that you can use within a small area. But if you want larger modules, that's definitely okay. Great. Well, thank you, Sivin. Um, I think that pretty much brings us to the end of our allotted time for today's webinar. So um, thank you very much for your you. uh, you. insights there. I know um, I found that very informative. So I very much hope our audience have as well today. 
Um, recordings of the presentation you've seen today will be emailed to um, those of you who signed up to the webinar in the next few days. Um, the full webinar will also be available uh, via pvtech, um, pv-tech.org. So keep an eye out for that. That will be up in a few days. So all that remains for me is to say a huge thanks to Astrology uh, for sponsoring this webinar. And of course, to Sibin, our presenter today. Thank you again, Sibin. Um, Thank you. I think contact details will be available on the presentation you receive uh, for any follow-up questions that you may have or we didn't manage to get to today. So I hope you can keep the conversation going. And thanks, of course, to all of you, uh, our audience, for tuning in. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed today's webinar. Um, have a very good rest of your day. And thanks from all of us at PV Tech. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks.